Hi, my name is Renee Hong. I go to Livingston High School in Livingston, New Jersey. Hello everyone, my name is Bianca Linares and I go to Jameswood High School in Winchester, Virginia. Hello everyone, my name is Alvin Kielber Alandu. I'm a senior at Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology in Alexandria, Virginia. And I'll be honest, when I first saw this prompt, I was a bit stumped. Many prey animals become less likely to engage in behaviors that reduce the risk of predation after repeated exposure to human activities. Our problem was to create a mathematical model to explore what happens when a group of people is introduced to a new area and their impact on animal behavior over time. Before creating our fundamental model, we laid down a foundational assumptions, um, and these were as follows. First, we assumed that the prey animals became less wary and therefore reduced anti-predation behavior. We assumed that animals interact with each other and humans um, to, uh, perturb it and over so that over a long term. And we also assumed that humans should be quickly introduced and that the animals will remain stable. You see, in differential equation modeling, there's a popular system known as the predator-prey equations. These equations describe a predator-prey system, such as rabbits and foxes, with two differential equations and four parameters, where x represents the prey population and y represents the predator population. In this system, the alpha x term represents the exponential growth of prey, which is assumed to be unbounded with infinite resources at the prey's disposal to reproduce. The beta xy term is the effect of predation on the prey, which is proportional to the number of predator-prey contacts xy. Similarly, delta xy is the reproductive gain for predators due to predation, and finally, gamma y represents the exponential decay of predators in the absence of prey. But at face value, this system does not model anti-predatory responses. The key challenge of this problem lies in modifying these predator-prey equations to account for the effect of humans on this system. So here's what we did. First, we reparameterized delta, such that delta represented the reproductive boost as a factor of beta xy. Next, we constructed a driving function for the human population using exponentials to rapidly introduce the humans to the ecosystem at time t0 and then rapidly remove them at time t1. And finally, we replaced beta with beta naught times some function p of t that accounts for the modified anti-predatory response in the prey population. While there are many potential functions for p of t, when no humans are initially in the system, we constrain all p of t functions to be equal to one. But wait, what function do we actually pick? Well, we started with an expression that linearly interpolated from one to d using the number of humans h as the interpolation factor. We arbitrarily chose d equals three, and doing so, we achieved the following dynamics. Notice, while the dynamics are cyclic, after the humans are introduced, the dynamics are much sharper with max prey and predator populations decreasing overall. But then when the humans leave, the dynamics become much more erratic and less desirable from a biological perspective. So how do we fix this? Well, we first assume that the changes in gene expression are instantaneous to the composition of individuals in the ecosystem. Consider a single prey individual. Of all non-prey encounters it has, using basic ratios, y over y plus h of them are predatory, while h over y plus h are peaceful. Thus, we can state that the anti-predatory gene expression will approach y over y plus h. Now, as this expression increases, we know that beta must decrease, which suggests that beta could be inversely proportional to this anti-predatory gene expression. So we can set p of t equal to k times y plus h over h, and then absorbing k into the beta naught variable, we can simply rewrite our beta of t function as beta naught times one plus h over y. Using this p of t function, we can analyze the dynamics with the same driving function for the human population. And doing so, we see very different behavior. When humans are introduced, the population now approaches an equilibrium state, 
And when the humans are removed, the population does return to cyclic behavior, but as if it had started with different initial conditions, ones closer to the equilibrium state. So we investigated this idea by introducing and removing humans instantaneously. And when we did this, the dynamics matched exactly as if the equilibrium state was used as an initial condition for normal predator-prey dynamics at time t1. This means that if we can predict the equilibrium state, we can predict the effects of humans on this predator-prey system. So we looked for equilibria. Assuming all populations are positive, we fix the human population to some value h0, and then set all the derivatives in the system to zero in order to find fixed points. Canceling terms, we rearranged to find y equals alpha over beta naught minus h. Substituting this back into our equation for x, we rearranged again, and then simplified, and then simplified some more, finding that x equaled y times gamma over delta beta naught. On a phase plot, we can vary the size of the human population h0 to find a line of all potential equilibria, and it turns out that the equilibrium corresponding to our initial conditions actually lies on this line. But notice, h0 must be bounded by alpha over beta0 to ensure that y and x are positive. For human populations above this bound, no fixed point exists, and that means both predator and prey populations go extinct which has dangerous implications. We utilized a novel technique in literature called physics and form neural networks, also known as PINs, which would enable us to learn the solutions and parameters of the differential equations. So the fundamental idea was to leverage the power of these neural networks um, as universal function um, approximators and apply them to our model. The success of um, the current wave of artificial intelligence has been attributed to these types of neural networks, which have been proven to be effective in learning the patterns from large data sets and minimal human intervention. Um, however, at this time, our physics and form neural network is still being improved, and we hope to achieve a closer resemblance to the exact solution with more testing and training. The next thing that we did was we tried to see how the influence of humans in an environment would impact resource allocation. We did this using the computer software Ample. Essentially, we assumed that the resources would be distributed optimally after a long period of time, and we took a look at one moment in time. We also assumed that each animal would eat enough each day to survive. The basic idea was to have two types of animals, one being the predator and one being the prey. We would determine the number of calories each needed for survival daily, the number of each animal living in the environment at that moment, and the number of calories that the predator would gain if they ate the prey. In the code shown here, we simply put in example values. Then we utilize a cost matrix to restrict who can eat who. As can be seen on the slide, only the predators can eat the prey. Then in our model, we have a constraint that states that each animal eats at least the amount that they need for survival. The amount they eat is the sum of the amount from eating other animals as well as the amount um, from eating resources. The amount of calories they gain from eating other animals increases as humans are introduced to the environment due to some of their anti-predator responses being muted. However, we have not yet represented that value in our AMPLE model. The x is its placeholder. The objective function finds the minimum, minimal amount of resources needed to essentially keep the entire population alive. After running this code on AMPLE, we can determine the amount of resources that are eaten by the predator, prey, and if humans are present, humans. We can modify whether there are humans in the model by changing the values of the parameters demand underscore h and number underscore h. By changing the values in our model, we would be able to determine the influence of human behavior on resource allocation. However, we were unable to finish this step as well as the previous step, and so we hope to continue this in our future work. We also hope to improve our PINs model in our future work. Here are our resources. And thank you so much.